Shin, uh, and I am the chef at Bucos Gracias here in Washington, D.C. I'm originally from Mexico. I'm from the state of Chihuahua, which is the largest state in Mexico. It's also up north border with Texas. Like right on the other side of the Rio Grande, you have Texas and then you have Chihuahua. Um, that's where the Chihuahua Desert, which is all of the desert that runs through um, the northern regions of Mexico and into what turns into the Grand Canyon at the base of the Rockies. All of that is the Chihuahua Desert. Um, I grew up in a family of um, restaurateurs. Really just like, it's meant to draw up ideas of festiveness and colorfulness and warmth. Food is, you know, in its purest form, is, it can be beautiful by itself. Um, all we do is really just add some accents. So I think most of most of my creativity is channeled through the food. I think uh, you know, it's it, I think it's a pretty common thing that we we usually eat with our eyes first before we eat. You know, we were talking about different types of food around the world. Um, and usually the most delicious ones are usually a deep dark brown or a deep dark red. So the idea is to be able to take on those foods that are really good and just sort of like bring, bring out the color. Well, first of all, when I think of Mexico, I think of um, things that are lively, that are, you know, that there's, there's loudness and joy and festiveness. So I try to translate what that feeling is through the food by making sure that everything that's on the plate pops out. Um, I think all of our decisions or my decisions when I'm making dishes or, or plating um, are very much informed. I have a little bit of background in art. Um, I've, through all of my life growing up, and now, now more so sporadically, but um, I've always just drawn and painted. Um, I mostly, um, I mostly use graphite as my medium. That's like the most the thing that I use the most, um, and I think when I when I look at food, um, I often think of how monotone and monochrome everything can be when you're doing things with just one thing, like with graphite. Mm -hmm. um, even though you can shade lighter or darker, um, with food we have the ability to make it not that. Um, and I think just being able to have connections with local farms and seasonal product um, and we just have access to so many things that are so bright and colorful that add so many different elements to the dish. Well, I think the design of Muchas Gracias is um, meant to be um, It's meant to be like um, reminiscent of the Southwest. It's like the adobe houses, um, light woods, uh, light tones. Very, very reminiscent of the desert. You know, we were talking about the Chihuahua Desert, so that's sort of kind of what this is um, meant to represent. Um, I think also growing up in a Latino household, um, my family and my family's family are very much into saving everything all the time. Um, some would call it practical recycling, some would call it hoarding. 
Um, so I think some of this is also just, I, when, I, when I think of spaces and when I think of restaurants or really even my own living space, I think um, of how to minimize, how, to, how, how can we show how great something is with the least amount of showing it. Mexican restaurants, people tend to equate it with almost like a Disney World um, mentality where there's like sombreros on the walls and you know like Mexican blankets and it just like turns into a, like an Epcot Center experience um, and some of the idea is that Mexico in itself is a I mean one it's beautiful it's full of culture it's full of color um, but it's also full of um, like super high-end architecture like very modern art um, and some of the most beautiful spaces in Mexico City and throughout the country tend to be very minimalist. Mm -hmm. Much of anything that is in cookbooks or... <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people, I think, most of the circles that I move in, whether it's chefs or um, bartenders that are, you know, in, in and of themselves creating all kinds of beautiful things. We have a lot of people that, um, that are around us that are musicians, photographers, painters, sculptors. Um, I think one of my favorite, well, I have a handful of favorite muralists, but um, there is um, Kelly Tells, who is really, really cool, that does a lot of stuff around the city. There's uh, the guys from No Kings Collective who also do really, really neat stuff. Um, who else? Um, I really, really, really like, um, there's this woman by the name of Frida Larios. I don't know if you're familiar with her. Um, but she does mostly, she does kind of a modern take on um, indigenous Central American art. Um, and she has a bunch of murals throughout the city. Um, and she does some really, really cool stuff that is reminiscent of like the Aztec calendar and the, the Maya alphabet and things like that. Uh, so all around, yeah, I think we're just surrounded by people who create in different mediums, whether it be music or, or art or food. Um, there's yeah, a ton. There's a, a, a lot of chefs, obviously, that I admire and look up to in the city. That uh, whether they're my peers or people I don't know, but I know of that you know also instruct and inspire a lot of the a lot of the dishes that that we move and. I think being around so many creatives um, allows us to continue pushing forward, right? Because you see, you start seeing what other people are doing, you start seeing how you can um, incorporate either techniques, ingredients, seasonality, whatever it is to your dishes. Um, so I think we all either directly or indirectly push each other to continuously be better. I love that. shifted so much since COVID started where you know first we didn't think we were gonna have a restaurant and then we turned into like a market um, I think one of the biggest aspects of the restaurant that we didn't really talk about but um, after we started cooking hot food for our employees we we're able to link up with two major nonprofits in DC um, one is friends and family meal and the other one is tables without borders who work directly with well, Friends of Family Meal works directly with farms um, and um, work and hospitality workers that were affected by COVID to make sure um, through donations they're able to buy product from farms that were also suffering because every restaurant was closed so nobody was buying product. Um, so they're able to buy that product and turn them into grocery bags for people that don't have money to go and get food and whether it's individuals or families. Um, through the work that we're doing, we were able to channel some of the donations, some of the work to make sure that they were focusing on Spanish-speaking or foreign language-speaking immigrants that were affected. Um, 
during COVID uh, or through the height of the pandemic. Um, and then Tables Without Borders that works with immigrants that are here either um, through refugee programs or seeking asylum um, who are looking for careers in the food industry. So they